Democrats and Republicans shop in different grocery stores. They buy different kinds of cars. They drink different kinds of soda. Um, they're, culturally and socially, they're very different from each other. Okay, so we have Liliana Mason today here with us, who's a professor of politics at the University of Maryland in College Park. And she's here today to talk with us about polarization in American politics. Thanks for coming to Gutti. Thank you so much for having me. So when people say that politics now is very polarized in the US, they usually mean it's more polarized in the past. Um, so how is politics different now than from the way it was in the 1970s or 80s, or even further back? Well, in, I would say back to the 70s and 80s, I think you're correct, uh, there were a lot more what I call cross-cutting identities um, so that Democrats and Republicans weren't exactly the same socially. Um, and, and today what we're seeing is that the Democrats and Republicans ra are racially and religiously becoming um, very sort of tribalized and different from each other. Um, so not only do Democrats and Republicans disagree about particular issues, but they also tend to think of each other as socially farther away from themselves, which makes it hard for them to find the idea of compromise, um, to want to uh, cooperate with each other, even to think of each other really as human, human beings the same way that they think of themselves. Some have described this as you know, rather some sort of asymmetrical polarization, meaning that conservatives have more moved to the ideological poles than Democrats or than liberals. Um, what do you think of that? Is this something that is stronger with one party than with the other? Or? Certainly in the elites, so in Congress, um, the Republicans have certainly gr grown farther right in their issue positions than they were before. Uh, uh, and certainly that has happened more than it has happened among Democrats, among elites. In the electorate as a whole, uh, what I've found in my research certainly is that um, Democrats and Republicans both really don't want to spend time with each other. They don't like each other very much um, and almost to the same degree. So uh, they isolate themselves socially and they don't want to spend very much time together. So what happened? What's the reason for this intense polarization? What has changed? Well, they don't, uh, they actually don't spend as much time together. They are, de de Democrats and Republicans shop in different grocery stores. They buy different kinds of cars. They drink different kinds of soda. Um, they're, culturally and socially, they're very different from each other. And so that makes it very hard to understand each other, almost from an anthropological point of view. They become uh, very much like two different tribes. They are culturally different, and it's very hard for them to understand um, each other's point of view. So I think you've already mentioned this, but to come back to that again, so it does not mean that only the elites are polarized or just party leaders, you would say that's a process that's not confined to them, but that kind of you know, affects ordinary Americans as well. Well, I think we have to understand what we mean when we say the word polarized. So the elites are polarized in a measurable way on the issues that they disagree on. Uh, some people have talked about polarization in American politics throughout you know, the last few decades as being this issue disagreement. What I'm talking about is more of a personal, social, emotional type of polarization where regardless of how much people agree or disagree with one another, they still dislike each other to a great extent and don't trust each other. So the way you describe it, it sounds pretty pessimistic because it's more about effective polarization, more about emotions than real issues. Um, but is there anything that might be you know, capable of overcoming this division? What would have to happen in order for this um, polarization that is so strongly related to social identity in your own interpretation, what would have to happen for this kind of polarization to become less bitter? Well, the last time uh, that this type of sort of polarization decreased and there was a party dis disalignment, you can say, um, was the 70s, 1970s, after um, the Civil Rights Act when Southern conservative Democrats broke off from the Democratic Party. So, in my opinion, what would have to happen again is another type of party realignment. So possibly the Republican Party. Um, we're seeing, sorry, we're seeing divisions between Republicans now in the, in the 2016 election. And I think that possibly seeing a break in their party would be um, possibly something that could realign the parties once again and cause these new cross-cutting identities. So that means the rise of Donald Trump, in a way, is a sign of hope? Perhaps there is a silver lining to the rise of Donald Trump in the sense that uh, if there is a real rift in the Republican Party, 
Um, that could cause some Republicans to possibly move away from that party and uh, Democrats to realign in some new way as well, causing people to re have to reshuffle these identities and maybe think about compromising with each other again. Thanks for coming to Go Göttingen and thanks for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you so much for having me.